Welcome back folks to another video of Bitwig Studio. We want to explore the beta version beta one at the moment uh, a bit more and I want to show you some tips and tricks um, what I found in the recent days. And the first thing you can see here in the background is probably the smallest arpeggiator patch you can build inside of the node grid. You can see it's just a few modules here, not much, actually just four. And we use here the node grid in polyphonic mode uh, we use 12 voices and we can just press some notes. And it plays all these notes in sequence or in an ordered sequence in exactly the same order you are pressing the keys on the keyboard. The only drawback is that you have to press these notes in sequence. If you press all the notes at once, they play basically the same pattern or yeah, on top of each other. And um, yeah, it's not that pleasant anymore. So you have to press the keys one after the other and then it works. And the reason for that is that we are using basically, or we abuse the note grid or the voice system, how it works in Bitwig Studio. So as you know, it's in uh, polyphonic mode. We use 12 voices. We have this module here, keys held, and it gives you the number of currently, uh, currently playing notes. And I think how it works is when you press down one key, you create one voice right? This patch is one voice and it gives you the number one. But when you press another additional key, it creates another voice, a second voice. And the first voice still gets one and the second voice gets the new number, which is two. If you press one additional key, the new voice gets three. The second voice still gets two and the first voice still gets one, right? So I think this is how it works. And we use this number here, one, two, three, right? To modulate this clock divider just by exactly one. So this means if we press down one key, we get the number one here. We modulate by the number of one, this clock divide, and then we add basically one to one, which ends up on two. So we clock divide by two when we hold down one key on the keyboard. This is not correct, but I want to keep it small and simple. So uh, this is how it works. And then we basically, when we press or hold down two keys, we get the number two here. Then we modulate by two and we modulate here by two and then we get three. So one plus two is three then, of course. So it works in this way. Um, you can correct this by just using a subtract here if you want to make this better. There's a constant here. So now when we use your four keys, right? Four minus one is three. And then we modulate by three. And then we have already one here. So three plus one is four again. Okay. And we need to subtract basically this one here from this keys held because we don't or we can't go down to zero here with the clock divider. Uh, one is the minimum value. So this is how it works. It's actually super simple. It has one big flaw that you have to press the keys in sequence, but maybe it's um, helpful to you for a future patch you want to create and you can remember this stuff here. So that's the smallest, simplest arpeggiator I could imagine inside of the grid. Okay, that's that. Um, then we have something new in the grid. Uh, I think it's something new. I never saw this before. Um, so here we have an out module and this out module has in the left side in the inspector clipping mode off hard and soft. And this is around for quite some time since the beginning. Uh, but I think what's new is the level here. You can change this from the clipping level from plus 60 B over zero dB. You can remove or can go down to zero dB. So now it clips everything that goes through this out clips at zero dB can show you this here. I can pull down the master knob, go in here. Let's use a sign, put this out. 
and choose here an amplifier. Let's see here, yeah, we clip at zero, then I amplify this and you can see it still clips at zero dB. There's a bit of leftover, it's 0 .0 0 0.1. So there's always something going above, maybe because of intersample peaks or I don't know, oversampling, I have no idea. So if you want to make this really clean, just put, put your peak limiter in there or just, I don't know, pull down this by 0 0.1 or 0 0.3. You still want to have a bit of headroom anyway when you want, when you want to bounce this, right? And then you can do what you want here and you still always clip exactly at 0 dB. If you want, you can also put this back here to 0 dB, uh, 6 dB. If you want to have more headroom right here or 12, as you can see. Um, if you want to have more a dynamic uh, result or outcome here of the, of the grid. But so you know it, you can change the level of the clipping here. Um, it doesn't matter inside of the DAW anyway how much you clip over 0 dB, it only matters when you when you go to the output or when you bounce down to audio to 16-bit audio or 24-bit audio. Um, it even doesn't matter if you bounce to a 32-bit audio, right? So um, inside of the DAW, if you have a red, um, red line here or you go into the red, it doesn't really matter. It only matters when it comes to bouncing to audio or to 16-bit audio or 24-bit audio. Okay, that's the clipping inside of grid. I never saw this before. Maybe we got this in uh, 5.011 or something like this, but I think we got this in 5.1. I'm not sure about this, but it's something I found recently at least. Then I showed you yesterday in yesterday's video about um, the sweep device. And I want to prepare your polymer with some, uh, with the saw lead in there maybe a bit of unison. So just we have something to play around with. So let's use a sweep device here. And I talked about that you can use the sweep device in polyphonic mode. You can increase here the voices in the inspector. You can also use voice stacking, right? So another thing you can do is, um, some, someone in Discord pointed this out, you have also here uh, uh, auto gate. So when you have multiple voices and you want to have them ring out, uh, you don't have to keep pressing the notes. You can just increase here the auto gate time by up to 10 seconds. So you, so you can let certain voices ring out, even though you just released keys or you release the notes, right? So auto gate is here by default at 30 milliseconds. This is okay. And, um, yeah, what I want to show is basically that you can use this here in polyphonic mode. So you can go maybe here to five voices, uh, but you don't have to use actually a keyboard input or note inputs. You can also create a note grid inside of the prefx box. You have to switch this here to note devices, note grid, and then you can create notes or voices in this note grid and basically fake keyboard input with that. So prefx and postfx is not only made for audio, it's also made for notes. So this is maybe important to know. So we can uh, just disconnect this here. We don't need note input actually. So we can say we want to trigger here maybe by two, we can dial in here a note, let's say D sharp three, right? can also say a second, second voice. Let's go here to the fifth different pattern, right? And now we create basically here notes that go into the sweep device. And inside of the sweep device, we can now uh, say, let's open here, or this, let's disable this filter here for a moment. We can go to band pass, pull this down to C3. Uh, uh, remove your all the modulations and then let's go to AD here. You can see we have already two voices here playing. Uh, we use this here for the input of that and we use a key track. We modulate this here by 64. And then we can input here actually a bit of noise.
Or maybe he's here. Um, we have to use here um, only filter one. So this is only noise, right? Just white noise going into the sweep device. And we are creating here some melodies with that just by using the note grid. Maybe post FX we use here peak, peak limiter so we can hear what's going on actually. Can do yeah, even more notes. Let's go to five or four different. So I'm using a basically high resonance and the filter and just noise. This is like, like an extreme example, but you can also pull this a bit more down and then use here um, different samples or different sounds in front of that. Right. So um, that's basically the, another thing I want to tell you that you don't need to use actually keyboard input or note clip input. You can create notes here with the note grid or can modify notes with the note grid here and then create voices or multiple voices on the sweep device because it's, it's just a grid device. It's just a, a new type of grid device and you can use it like every other a grid device can create voices or voice stacking and so on. So this is a neat way of doing things or making this more musical in a way. Um, just a small tip from, for myself, for you to explore, right? <laughs> also new in 5.1 is the module called Pitch Bus. And it's actually just an attenuator. Uh, but the special thing is that the unit it's using is semitones in instead of percentage. So when we use here an attenuate, it's basically the same thing, maybe in bipolar mode here. And I think there's also a bug here. If you put this in bipolar mode and the left side here, the negative range needs to be the red line removed because we had zero, it needs to look like this here, right? Instead of this. Anyway, so here, this is the same thing, but attenuate basically um, uses percentage of the signal that you're inputting. So you can dial in maybe 50% of whatever signal you use and then can scale the signal. Um, but the pitch bus, it's working instead of percentage, it uses uh, semitones. And this has some interesting effects. So the first interesting thing I found about it is if you have to use your readout and use a constant and use zero as an input here, uh, let's put this here to uh, semitones mode. Okay, so we use here seven semitones, right? Input is zero, nothing comes out, it's still at zero. And how pitch, maybe you know how pitch signals work inside of the grid. So C3 always equals to zero. It's the middle C, it's always zero. Everything below, you know, goes negative. Everything above goes into positive, so if you use here, let's say the constant in this, so zero is C3, one is C13, it's the highest note, and minus one is C minus seven, which is the lowest note you can play in Bitwig Studio. And everything in between is every other note, of course. And now when we use the pitch bus for that and put this in, now one equals to plus seven, which is G3. So we basically, are going from C3, seven semitones up to G3. And when we use two here, we go again, seven semitones up to 14, which is D4. So you can use this kind of an quantizer to go up on notes in certain intervals. So we go basically this, um, the notes up here in seven semitone steps, right? So if you use here, a sine oscillator and an output. Use this as an input. So nice seven semitones intervals 
Or maybe just minor thirds. It's also possible. So it's a nice device already for just using it for going up in intervals or certain steps. Um, the interesting thing is that instead of having the constant here going directly into the pitch, uh, one is the highest note. One is not the highest note anymore. It's just, you know, attenuated to uh, being the first step up in three semitones. Um, so it's scaled down basically. Um, so one now means three semitones up and two means two times three semitones up. I hope this makes sense. Um, you can also input here multiple things. You can say, I want to have two inputs, right? And here, this one goes to seven. So now how this works is, uh, if you go everything to zero here, you have C3 because it's zero. Then you go up three semitones, right? And then you add one seven semitones, which end up on 10. So you can basically play, play around here with this and go up three semitone steps, then seven semitone steps, and you can play around with these intervals. I think you can create a lot of nice note grids just with this pitch bus device here and dialing in here certain um, intervals like minor thirds, major thirds, uh, fifths, and so on, right? Um, so the interesting part is basically that you have to use here something above one and higher that you have to use integers to get actually nice uh, nice notes out of that. You can always use floats in between, right? You can see now here we basically bend the C4 down a bit until we reach C4 and so on. So you can also target individual bands or frequencies in between. If you don't want to have that, if you have maybe an input signal that's not scaling up in integers, you can use, of course, something like quantizer in front of that or easier, just use a round. So round basically rounds uh, these, these floats up to the next integer. So when we use here readout, go into that, Use so so one is one, but when we use here some floats, you can see it stays on one until we hit zero dot five. It stays on one, one down, and now it rounds down to the next integer, which is zero, right? So one one point five rounds up to two, one point four nine rounds down to one. Or you can use seal or floor. Floor rounds always down and seal always rounds up to the next integer. Right, so you can use seal here and everything that's above one always rounds up to two. Until we hit then here, of course, two and then 2.01 rounds up to two. Right, It's always rounding up basically. So that's, that's something you can use then for some different signals. If you use audio input or audio rate input or whatever you want to use, and you can bring this to up to, you know, certain integers and then use that for with the pitch bus here and target individual intervals with that. It's a really, really interesting device. Actually in, in, th in theory, it just works exactly like the attenuate, like I showed you before, but just using here, these units, or semitone units, it makes it highly musical and interesting for uh, the note grid, in my opinion. Okay, that's it for this video. Please let me know if you have some questions. Leave a like if you like the video. And as always, don't trust me. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video. Bye.